Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Coffee and Tea talk on art with Mark Eames. Cheers. Your present. Preparing for this conversation, um, Mark had the desire to talk about, let me get this title right, the nature and the importance of influences. Yes. Influences. Uh, just name a few people who were influential in your life okay. as an artist and as okay. a person. So I can do that. Okay. <laughs> I can try Let's to be hear succinct. It. So now I'm going back literally almost, 50, well, 50 years in time. So I'm going back to my developmental years in college and then move forward from there. So I can easily say that in my development as a painter, because of my teachers, by the way, who were very influential, so I'll begin with that without mm -hmm. mentioning them. So that was an influence. But in terms of artists that I was looking at, I was looking very carefully at European painters. So I was looking um, at everyone from the Renaissance to, let's say, 19th, 20th century. Who was of a particular importance? I'd have to say Cezanne, who was right up there at the top. He was really noted as the sort of father of modern art, which is an explanation I could go into later, but Picasso and Brock looked at him figure out cubism. So, um, yes, I would say Cezanne was very important early on in my development. Um, and along with the post-impressionists. So everywhere, everywhere, everyone from Gauguin to Van Gogh to a number of them. There's a whole host of artists that I love looking at. Toulouse-Lautrec. There's just a long history there. So that's my sort of early beginnings. Mm -hmm. And I would do studies and copies of them in my own version, etc. So that's that. Then I can fast forward, let's say my mind is taking me to uh, the late 70s and early 80s. All that time for about 10 years, I've been working uh, from direct observation. And then I began to work abstractly with little collages, tiny things, three by five inches. And I was looking at the Russian constructivists mm -hmm. for my ideas and for inspiration. And also right around that time, I was starting to look at Richard Diebenkorn quite a bit. Um, I have other major influences. Mirandi is a huge influence. Huge. I would say that one of my favorite influences is some of the Renaissance painters, but in particularly, I'd have to say Fra Angelica is a huge influence. Mm -hmm. Why? Not just the, con the content, first of all, the stories that he tells, but the design. The designs are amazing. The colors, I, I made a special trip to New York years ago, just for a weekend. And I did this twice in my life. Once to see Mirandi, and once to see Fra Angelico. And I couldn't afford to do that. But I made a special point to go for a weekend in New York, just to see these two artists. That's like a trip to Mecca for a serious painter. Uh, there are many others. Mark Making, Cy Twombly, um, more recently, Sean Scully. So I'm part of a lineage. Mm -hmm. I think that's what teachers are. So the voices and the lessons of my former teachers are with me and then I pass that on to the students I work with and uh, some of my students have gone on to teach and they take a little bit of what I've had to offer them and they make it their own. So you're always making it your own. But yeah, it becomes a lineage. It becomes this, these connections that we have. Um, I remember, a reason I'm chuckling to myself is I I remember once being in a, a faculty session, we were talking about teaching, and that was the nature of our session. And one of the teachers said, um, I, I, I view myself as a diuretic for my students. I just get them to move, I get things to move along. It's a very scatological uh, uh, comment. We all laughed very hard. But when you thought about it, it's like, oh, he's right in a way. I, I can't teach art. I can't even teach desire or curiosity. Those are the most important things. But he was really correct. Part of what we do as teachers is get people to, to move things along, to, mm -hmm. get, to motivate students, to show them this is how it can be done, these are the possibilities, and get them moving. But I want to touch on a larger, if I may, issue with this, and this is looking at art and looking at artists. I would say that if someone asked me what are the, t what are the most m important influences in my life, I would say nature is number one. Mm -hmm. Nature is number one. I was a gardener for many, many years, as you know. And so the design of nature is a huge part of my early development. 
I drew a lot from nature and I still do. So that's number one. Number two would be my teachers. And then number three would be uh, the masters, the painters. And not just European, by the way. I would add that I have t had the good fortune, but I've also made the point to travel. So I've been to <coughs> Africa and to parts of, um, I've been to India, and I've looked at the art of Africa, I've looked at art of India, I've been to Mexico and Cuba, and wherever I go, I'm looking at the art. I go to museums, I go to galleries. So I've made a personal decision as someone who has dedicated my life to this, to go out and see as much art and artwork as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. As I told you earlier in our prior conversation, Maria, I have an insatiable uh, appetite for looking at art and looking at artists, and I'm voracious. It's insatiable, it's voracious. Again, I can't teach that. I wish mm. I could. I wish I could teach the kind of appetite that I've had in my development to other people, but I can't. And that's, that comes out of curiosity. So I would say to any artist, visual artist, who is really thinking about where will my ideas come from? Where will my inspiration come from? Where will my connections come from? I would say that if you have the means to go to the unfamiliar, particularly out of our normal navigation, mm -hmm. go to whatever galleries, museums you can, and if you can't do that, perhaps build a library. It's the next best thing. And finally this, and I'll let you uh, no, it's fine. take it, take it. Yeah. And finally this, um, we live in an age of the screen. Mm. Fantastic tool, fantastic tool. Whether it's the it smartphone. It helps now that we are locked in the house. <laughs> and we're filming this during the COVID-19. COVID uh, yeah, we've pandemic, been here for a yeah. pandemic. So, but, so yeah, the internet, internet is an amazing tool. But it conceals as much as it reveals. And I'm perhaps call me old school. Mm -hmm. But I would say that Instagram and other sites like that is this much of the iceberg. The big iceberg is the history of art. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about painting. I'm talking about printmaking. I'm talking about sculpture. I'm talking about photography, huge. I'm talking about architecture. Mm. I'm talking about the plastic arts. And it, it takes a lot of effort to seek that out. But I'm telling you, that's been, um, that's been my life's joy. I find joy in going to museum. It's almost like me going to church. Mm -hmm. And you know very well when we go together, I can't talk with you for very long. Yeah. I have to be off on my own like a lone wolf. you know. And then later we will connect and say, well, what do you think of this piece or that piece? So I do urge people to go and look at actual artwork, actual paintings, actual drawings. Get in front of it and take more than a glance. There's a difference, by the way, huge difference between looking at something and really studying it. How did they do that? Getting in close. Mm -hmm. Like, how did they do that? What are they up to? Be a detective. And then go and look at it from across the room. Spend real time. And that also brings time. another um, thing that uh, we were talking a little bit, touching on earlier. Now that you mentioned studying and just observing something, but even as you're talking, um, I feel like there is a... Um, thin line or a gray zone between what could be an influence and an inspiration because mm. it feels like all these trips and things that you see in museums are also highly inspirational mm -hmm. and I know you mentioned um, that Agnes Martin said that um, inspiration is something that puts you to work something right. that, that propels you to create or to go to work right and so I just wanted to kind of check on this with you again, um, how would you discern inspiration from influence? It's a great question. Um, you can't separate them, they're really intertwined, mm -hmm. but you can make a distinction. So influences and inspiration are linked, mm -hmm. they're, it's an, they're integral. I would say if I had to make a distinction that the influences, that is to say, the art that we look at, the artists that we're looking at, um, provide the inspiration. Inspiration, as Agnes Martin and others say, is really the motivation to do one's work. And the inspiration can come from any variety of sources. 
maybe I hear a great song or see a beautiful sunset. That might inspire me mm -hmm. to go into the studio. Yeah, you but mentioned nature as one of the influences, and then all of a sudden it was like, is that an influence or an inspiration? That's a, bit, that's a great distinction. <laughs> I would say it's an inspiration. Yeah. Uh, and so they intertwine, maybe that's the distinction. Um, and so, yeah, there's that. And I also want to touch on, before I forget, this idea of working through the influences. Mm -hmm. So an influence, yes, can send us to the studio or give us ideas as to what we want to do. But then there is this whole issue of derivative, that horrible word, like, oh, his work, her work is derivative. Yeah. It looks like so-and-so, or it looks like so-and-so. May I actually, please, if I can yeah. manage to, because this is one of Mark's recent paintings. You probably saw it on Instagram. We posted a picture of it, and I know that a lot of people reacted to it as um, recognizing demon corn in it. Correct. And you named it, I think, the title of this piece is Ode to R.D. To R.D. Who is one of the most important influences. He's done my top ten. But to me it was really interesting how you fully embraced that title. Like, yeah. oh, it looks like Dameron Gordon. And you go, Damn right. yes. So it's not, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. And yeah. it's not, you know, and, and, I, and I remember through my work in the beginning when I was still studying and and some of my work did really look like, well, not really look like, that's uh, giving myself too much compliment and credit, but mm -hmm. it was obviously resembling um, the work of... Um, Modigliani? No, Modigliani. Uh, Modigliani. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and then people would tell me, well, that really looks like Modigliani in a pejorative way. Like, you know, it's like, yeah. well, you know, you're just kind of copying. Derivative. Yeah, and, and I would get offended because it wasn't my intention to do so, but yes, yeah. it looked, but so to me, it's yeah. really interesting how you, when someone would say that, it doesn't matter if the intention was good or bad, Yeah. as a comment, you know, it's just like, well, that looks really like different corn, and you would be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and do me a favor, grab this one here, because this is important. Yeah. So let's go down this track for just a moment. Okay. So this piece here is a recent piece, and early on, and I'm going back to the early to mid 80s, Kurt Schwitters, Mm -hmm. Fantastic collage artist. I looked at him quite a bit. He was a huge influence, Kurt Schwitters. And quick story about Kurt Schwitters. Mm -hmm. um, and this is influence in a way, but I didn't think that at the time. But quick little story about Kurt Schwitters. So I did collage for many, many years. Just, sorry. <laughs> so I did collage for many, many years. And um, it'll never go. Yeah. And then I went away from it for a while and just did oil painting. Mm -hmm. right. Several years ago, uh, there was a big show of Kurt Schwitters, a retrospective at the Berkeley Museum that Lawrence Rinder put together. Mm -hmm. And I went to go see it. And it blew my mind. Again. And I want to speak to this for a moment. When I saw the Kurt Schwitters exhibition, I had not been doing collage or mixed media for a, a long time. And when I saw in particular his small collages, something in me clicked. And I thought to myself, I'm getting back to collage. Mm -hmm. You see, two things happened. I was inspired by the Kurt Schwitters show, number mm -hmm. one. I had real inspiration, like, oh yeah, I miss doing that. I want to get back into it. And number two, um, I realized that he was an early influence in my development that I had mm -hmm. sort of walked away from but wanted to come back to. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yes, Kurt Schwitters was one of my important influences. And here I am, um, several years later, still doing collage. So look how long that's lasted. Who knows, maybe five, 10 years from now, I'll stop doing collage and go back and do something else or move forward into another area. So these influences, you see, can stay with us. Hmm. They can wax, they can wane, but they're always there. They're part of our fiber, our, part of our psyche, part of our part of our uh, collective being, mm -hmm. because it's connections that we're seeking. This is what I want to come back to, that in terms of influences, it's connections that we're seeking from the past to present to future. The lineage. The lineage mm -hmm. of art. And this is what Jeanette Winterson talks about mm -hmm. in that book that I like to read from. She talks, there's a whole chapter that I read aloud to my students about the importance of influence and the ability 
ability to work through those influences to discover our own voice, to make it new, she says, mm -hmm. to make it new. Baudelaire wrote this wonderful quote, he was at once all the books he had read and all the art he had looked at and was still profoundly original. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we all strive for. And uh, I would be curious to hear from um, you who are watching this about your thoughts about influences, who influenced you as an artist and as a person, as a human being? Um, what are influences to you? Are they a good thing or a dangerous thing that you know some people want to really stay away and then some people fully embrace? I think they're pitfalls. Yeah. I do. And, um, and if you have any other questions or ideas about future or for future conversations with Mark, we would be happy to to hear those. Yeah. So feel free to leave the comments uh, under this video. Uh, I also wanted to mention so Mark, Mark's website, uh, markeens.com and uh, Mark's social media, so Instagram and Facebook account, it's Mark Eans Studio. If you want to subscribe to Mark's newsletter, uh, and we don't send a lot of newsletters, it's really once a month or once every second month, uh, please go to Mark's website and you'll see the button subscribe for the newsletter so you can get on that loop. Any last thoughts or comments? Um, last comments, if I may, on influences because it just occurred to me and I just briefly mentioned it earlier was that we've been talking about influences of artists and visual arts. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to discount all the other kinds of influences and inspirational things that we encounter. I'm thinking of filmmakers, for instance, and all the great films I've watched. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about my love for all kinds of music that I love to listen to. Uh, I think about, for instance, dance, mm -hmm. um, theater, all But again, are those influences or inspirations? I think they're both. Mm -hmm. I think they're both. If I had never, you know, I think of Kurosawa, for instance, or the great filmmaker and his visual abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of Fellini and his visual abilities, but also the content, the emotional content. It's not just technique, you see, Maria. It's not just, oh yeah, the technique is great. No, it's really the emotions that one feels. Mm -hmm. I've told you before, I have wept in front of a little Van Gogh painting of work boots. Mm -hmm. What is that all about? <laughs> that's both that's both influence as well as inspiration yeah, and emotion. Impact, yeah. that's, that's impact from the heart. Mm -hmm. So influences are not just cerebral, you see. They're integral to our emotive mm -hmm. experiences as well, and even spiritual. So it's a much, that's why I say this is a big conversation, because mm -hmm. it's much broader than just so, oh yeah, I'm looking at Diebenkorn because I love the way he uses color and, and design. No, that's just a small part of it. Mm -hmm. It's the emotion I get when I'm standing in front of a certain piece of work. Part B, probably. Part B coming up. Who knows? <laughs> Let us know what you think. Yeah. All right. Thank Shares. you all.